did some accounts when they looked at the roundabout. It was a little short of a signal, but we think as things continue to grow in Romanville and, and Lockport and everywhere else, that um, it will meet the warrants to put in a signal and the ultimate design will look like something that you see on your screen. Um, if it doesn't warrant it, then it would just be the slip lane merge, which would still be great. If anyone has traveled that recently, it sometimes backs up, and people are confused when they come to that intersection. You can kind of tell, like, where are they supposed to go and, and be when they want to turn, and so the topography is off there. Um, so we think this is one of the major kind of backup points still left in our city, and um, we'd like to proceed with this, and this would be approving the resolution 21027, for a task order to complete a phase one uh, with IDOT and, um, and look at the fruition of the feasibility of, of having construction on this intersection change. Any questions? I, I think this is a great idea because we've always tried you know, to work out how do we get east-west traffic over the Des Plaines River and uh, 9th Street Bridge is always problematic. 135th, this can be a real bottleneck for people coming over to the 135th Street Bridge and going south. They get stuck 20 cars deep here. A slip lane would be great. And um, yeah, I think uh, I always like that uh, one proactive citizen. You ever see, if you go down there, you see the tire tracks across the grass. You ever see those? It's like, guys, I'm just doing it. So it'd be good if it were actually paved. <laughs> yeah. I got one question. Uh, sure. The 8020 in the future, mm -hmm. uh, if if the signal came in later, does that then qualify as 80-20 also, or does the whole project have to be put together for 80-20, or can it be 80-20 to do the lane changes and then come back later with another project? Because I think you design it with that in mind, right? You design it so that it could go either way, and we could certainly talk to V3 about that to make sure, but I, it could the signal could be added later. And I'm assuming we can do right up, you know, when we do the grant application, Brian, if you can help me on that. Sure. They, they would be separate, basically. So what we would do is we would go to uh, to go to IDOT. Um, here's the phase one, whatever f that phase one, that initial approval was. So if, if it's approved without a signal today, they'd give us the 8020 to do the improvements. And then if a signal were to be warranted at a later date, we would go back to them for an 8020 on the signal portion. So it would be two separate jobs. We wouldn't jobs. lose out on funding. Okay. Correct. Yeah, we would not absolutely not lose out on funding. The phase one is is good, um, you know, for for basically for that reason, to, to get us the 8020 in the future for either of those options. I mean, state routes, you we're utilizing federal and local funds to fix state routes. They pretty much love it when we do this, so shouldn't have any problems. All right, are you guys okay with the consent on this? All right, okay. consent it is. Uh, let's see here. Next item, Mayor and members of the Council. Um, we've got some amendments. Uh, we, we brought some cost uh, sharing for maintenance amendments before with the fire district. Um, yeah, the EVPs, um, the traffic preemption, preemption devices, uh, are those little things on the traffic lights when the, I think it's the strobe lights on the, on the cruisers that set them off um, and allow the traffic to go through. It's a great safety thing. Um, the fire department was gracious enough. They had pretty much installed them in most parts of the town already when we, when we talked to them about a, a maintenance sharing agreement. Um, and since then, we've identified a few other locations that we'd like to add them, in particular out at 355 when we started looking at um, um, the potential for cameras out there. Um, Christina, when you asked that a few months ago, so we're going to be bringing that back to you too at some point with a cost estimate. But in the meantime, we realized we needed a few more of these devices. The fire district has asked us to amend our um, our, amend our agreements. We had not one but two agreements. Um, we're going to um, ask for a resolution to combine them, right, Sonny? You might want to explain yeah, the business actually, part of this for me. Yeah, let me clarify. Um, there was actually the, the whole project was supposed to be one agreement. Uh, for whatever reason, two agreements were passed, 15-003 that was approved in December and 15-004 that was approved in, in October. The, the correct version is the 15-004. So at this time we would be withdrawing the um, amendment to the uh, agreement that is 15-004, which is resolution 21-0. One nine. What is before you today is a revised uh, resolution that is um, highlighted revised today, resolution 21-020 that adopts the um, amendment, to, that approves the amendment to agreement number 15-004 that 
uh, would include the cost of installation to set traffic signal preemption system devices on a 50-50 basis. So I think it was an oversight um, the, for whatever reason. Back in 2015. The, yeah, 2015 there wasn't a sharing of the cost of the installation. The am amendment to the agreement also allows for the parties to agree where the devices would be located and the uh, revised version repeals agreement 15-003 which is a redundant um, or duplicative agreement. So um, resolution 21-20 should be placed on consent. We're requesting that to be placed on consent. And if there's any questions, I'm sure either Ben or I could answer them. If it's confusing because of the resolution <laughs> changes, we can leave it as action. It's not a problem. Yeah. Maybe we should do that as an action and just clarify the yeah. one. Or, or just the the revised one is revised yeah. one would be the one well are you guys okay well, first off are there any questions on it okay are you guys okay with the revised one on consent then okay thank you okay i think jr was only good with it as long as he got a little thing in his car that yeah <laughs> i'm still waiting i'm Go still waiting for one of those myself yeah. all right so let me know. consent then all right very good all right uh 81 what do we got A21 is an amendment to the restated annexation agreement to a, adding a, a property that is about nine acres. Would you turn your mic on, please? Oops, sorry. I had it off. Okay. So item 81 um, before you is an amendment to the already prior existing annexation agreement back in 2019. Uh, the city council approved the annexing of a property located at 14106 Archer Avenue, which is on the corner of Archer Avenue and uh, Bisham Street. So at that time, there was no development. The property was annexed and rezoned to C3 highway commercial district within the city. Subsequent to that, the owner of the property acquired the north property, nine acre property into the city. And if I could have someone click on to the next slide so we could see. <laughs> oh, there was, okay. S no, that, no, yeah. So did, they didn't put in the revised um, PowerPoint, whoever put it in. Okay, this one. So the um, parcel on, on the south, the corner with the parcel identification number ending in 003, that was annexed in 2019. So uh, at the same time, the right of way was vacated to that property owner and now the property owner also bought the parcel north of that with the pin number ending in 009. Uh, the petitioner or the owner is requesting that parcel with 009 be added to the annexation agreement, be annexed, rezoned C3 highway commercial and in addition to that be rezoned to in addition to that, have a special use for a unique use to allow the outdoor storage of bad mulch. The mulching production is done at the northern parcels, uh, north of the ComEd parcel with the pin number ending in 002. So what is being contemplated is that the mulch product from the northern parcel would be transported to the consolidated parcels ending in 009, the right of way, and 003. And the annexation agreement also lists prohibited uses that would include no large truck stop establishment or large truck stop as defined under the Illinois Video Gaming Act. The special use for the unique use will only apply to the current owner. So if the property is sold, then that special use for the unique use would end and it, or if there's a succession of that business for more than six months, it would also automatically end. We request the city council to hold a public hearing on February 17th to consider the annexation agreement and the annexation and approve resolution 21-021, which requires a two third vote. So the mayor would be voting at ordinance number 21-005 that would annex the property. 
the petitioner, the owner, and the owner's counsel are not here for health reasons, but we are more than happy to entertain them. We told them um, they don't have to be here. We're more than happy as staff to answer any questions. So if there's any questions, I would be more than happy to, to answer them. Any questions, concerns? And Lance um, will go through some of the more specific details of the special use for the unique use. I'm just here to kind of talk about the annexation agreement. Okay. So we'll uh, put that up for a public hearing then? That's what we're looking for? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go back. Yep, back to in item AT1 is it deals with the same owner and also um, the owner, same owner, uh, Mr. Ron Reposh owns Reposh Investment LLC. So off the uh, corner of Archer Avenue and 143rd Street, there are pieces of properties, a total of 17.82 acres in size, in which the petitioners, uh, Combined Asset Development and Reposh Investment, have requested that those parcels be annexed into the city, be rezoned as C3 Highway Commercial within the city's zoning district, and be granted a special use for unique use to allow semi-truck parking, but only to the principal, only to the parcel with the address of 16464 West 143rd Street. So what's highlighted in blue. So we're not talking about the unique use for semi-parking for any of the parcel except for that 14464 West 143rd Street parcel. So just like the, the prior annexation agreement, there are lists, there is a list of prohibited use, including the prohibited use of a large truck stop establishment or large truck stop as defined in the Illinois Video, Video Gaming Act. And again, as uh, similar to the prior item, the unique use to allow the semi-truck parking and storage shall now run with the land. It only applies to the current owner, Combined Asset Development, LLC. We're requesting that the City Council hold a public hearing on February 17th and vote to approve Resolution 21-022, which approves the annexation agreement by two-third vote, so the mayor votes, and approve Ordinance Number 21-006 that um, annexes the property and requires only simple majority vote, so the mayor doesn't vote. So again, um, the petitioner and council are not here for health reasons, and I would be more than happy to entertain any questions. The detail of the actual special use for the unique use would be um, discussed in detail by Lance. Okay, so we'll have a public hearing on that. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, is it 17 acres that will be trucking, or how, how many no. acres will be trucking there? Um, again, the, the parcel that is only being impressed with the special use for the unique use is the parcel highlighted in blue. So that will be... Um, no, Roughly 8.2 acres. Yes. 8.2. 8 .2. So it will be the front 8.2 acres on Archer Avenue. Do they have to create any barrier or like pretty making it and that, nicer? That, oh, we will talk about that. Yeah, okay. That will be discussed by Lance okay. regarding the buffering, landscaping, any other pavement Probably skip requirements. skip BT3 for now and let him go into CD1 into the details. If, we'll if, come back to your... Yeah, um, with the semi-annual. If that's okay, then that way, if there's yeah. any questions. Okay, thank you. Remember, this is kind of operating as such in the county already right now. They're just, yeah. We're bringing them into the city and making some improvements. So Lance, with that, why don't you... Sure. Yeah, with that, well, Lance, why don't you go ahead and CD1. CD1. Okay. So for this one, this is to rezone this. Sunny introduced a lot of this stuff, so I'm just going to repeat a couple things. Um, this is to rezone the parcel from C3 Commercial, A1 Agricultural, and A2 Agricultural that is in the county to C3 Highway Commercial in the city with a special use permit of Sunny outlined for a unique use to allow semi-truck parking as a principal use for the existing Homer Industries site um, that is outlined in blue um, on your screen. The overall property is the uh, yellow dashed line, probably better shown um, on their annexation area. 
Um, what is in yellow on your screen is the overall annexation area to be brought into the city and where you see annexation parcel number eight, um, kind of down in the lower left-hand corner, that is the parcel that would be impressed with the special use permit. The overall intent of the project is to ultimately relocate and consolidate all of Homer Industries operations on the west side and the north of Archer Avenue, Route 171. Um, that's the goal so that this would then be sold as a commercial property given its high profile location and high visibility at 143rd and Archer. So that is, that's, those are all the moving pieces that we're trying to accomplish here so it doesn't stay in perpetuity as stands landscaping. Um, it rather gets redeveloped in the future to something that has a higher and better use um, in total. So that's, that's the goal. The, um, the property is overall comprised of eight different parcels. As Sonny mentioned, it's 17.82 acres. The largest parcel was 8.2. Um, there are seven additional abutting parcels, five of which are vacant, two of which one of which has a single family home on it that is currently rented. The other one had a single family home on it. It was vacated and donated to the fire district who used it as um, uh, test cases for putting out fires and different things like that. It is no longer on the site because they burned it down. Um, this was considered at the January 12th, 2021 uh, Planning Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, the applicant was present and did answer questions. There was one uh, resident that lived adjacent to the property who requested uh, two different items. Uh, he requested that the existing lights that are being used be shielded so that they don't glare into his backyard anymore and his bedroom windows. Uh, the applicant agreed to that. He also requested landscaping and screening be utilized along the front end, specifically along Archer. Following on to that, the um, Commissioner of Portfolio requested that a fence be utilized from the north corner of the property around the Horn at 143rd Street to connect in with the office building that is currently existing on the site. All of those have been uh, accommodated by the applicant that we'll go through here in a second. Based on the findings of fact in the, recommend, in the PZC recommendation, they did find that there was evidence uh, presented to establish that they, the parcel be impressed with a special use permit for that unique use, um, subject only to the current owner, as Sonny outlined, and does not transfer with the land. This provides us with a level of assurance that um, truck parking will not uh, be expanded on the site, nor will it continue in perpetuity. Um, if the land ever transfers to somebody else, that uh, approval expires with it. Um, as Sunny outlined as well, there are some limitations to the uses that can be um, done on that site once it's rezoned. Um, and the Planning Commission agreed that the C3 zoning designation was appropriate for the site. So on this screen, what you see here is basically the conditions that are listed out in the uh, staff in the PZC's recommendation shown onto a graphic. Um, so the darker uh, green circles with the red are new evergreens, uh, eight feet tall. The lime green larger circles are new shade trees. Um, there is a fence that is highlighted by a white line with circles that run along with it that runs from that north corner around the end uh, at 143rd Street, back on 143rd Street to connect to the office building or their parking lot that's directly on the west side of the building. They will improve two of the aprons at, on Archer Avenue and on 143rd Street to new city standards. They will sod in a portion of the gravel that currently extends beyond where the uh, fence will ultimately go. They are going to remove or reconfigure the existing sign uh, frame that's been out there for three decades or more. Um, they will, if they do uh, kind of reformat it, they're gonna meet the city zoning standards and zoning codes for height, material, um, appearance, all those different types of things. Um, they are going to remove the bulk storage bins. So when Stans was there, that's where they kept all the uh, mulch, gravel, uh, boulders, and things like that. They're gonna take all of those off the site 
and uh, clean that section of it up as well. So those kind of go, go over some of the physical improvements, but as far as the recommendation, the PZC did adopt our findings of fact contained in the staff report and recommended approval of the rezoning. Uh, can, subject to the, to the conditions that were outlined in your report, that the special use is a, for a unique use is non-transferable for any reason and is only valid for the current operations. The applicant is to provide a plat showing um, all structures, including the buildings, with a legal description that the uh, paved driveway, and this is a this is a change that has occurred um, after discussion with the applicant, the paved driveway entrance connecting Archer Avenue and 143rd Street into the West Truck Yard, that was exchanged in to get the aprons redone according to the city standards at both of those locations. There will be a fence that matches the fence that will be installed on the other project on the west side of Archer um, that runs from the north portion of the existing parking area along Archer south to 143rd and then back to the office building. And then in addition, the applicant will install as many trees as possible in front of the fence. Um, they will remove the abandoned bulk sign, bulk bins and the old sign frame at the corner of 143rd and Archer. Again, the intent of both the annexations is to locate all the bag storage on the West Archer site. Bags will be removed um, from this parcel that you see out there right now, and no other bags can be stored on this site um, after the other site is in use, and no expansion relevant to the existing operation can occur. Uh, the lots with the homes on them, or homes formerly on them, will need to be vacated once the property sells and that the SUP special use permit does not transfer with the sale of the property. With that, I will take any questions. The request is to uh, place this case on the consent or well, they have to go on the action, yes, action yeah, agenda. They will be mirroring the annexation agreement, so both items will be on the action. So this will be associated with ordinance number 21003. Yes. Good yeah. Questions, maybe, concerns? maybe I missed it, but I, or it, maybe it's in here. Uh, is this then, I assume, consistent with our corridor study? Yes. Okay. So our corridor study shows this site as a highway commercial site um, intended for either inline retail or a destination restaurant or something along those lines. Um, it is a slightly challenging site in, the, in that it has two tiers. So if you know where the current semis park, it's a, that's on the lower tier where stands used to have all the greenhouses located. And then there's an upper tier that is uh, basically framed in by a retaining wall. So there, you know, ultimately once it's developed, there probably will be some unique ways in which uh, the site's gonna have to be done um, to take advantage of those two different tiers. But the intent is yes, it does follow the, the plan that we have, are currently underway with. He plans to market it, he wants it to sell it, it's commercial, right? So this is yeah. probably a temporary use, but um, you know, if it doesn't sell, then it'll be here. Yeah. Um, look at the landscaping plan we have out here. Because it's such a major intersection, and we would see it as almost a entryway into uh, future use of Archer. Um, I would like to see increased landscaping at the corner because okay. it is a, because it is a unique corner. So if they're going to do a new sign, um, mm -hmm. I would want more than just two two and a half caliper minimum diameter trees and two bushes mm -hmm. at the intersection. I, I think there can be a little more uh, creativity there. And also along 143rd Street, I count two bushes. I think we can do better there in terms of um, increasing the uh, variety along 143rd, because I know there's going to be that fence there. So if we break it up just a bit, and then um, if they can just come back to us with a more dense, more creative, better landscaping plan. Any comments on Archer? Regarding the landscaping? Mm -hmm. I would want to see all three sides. Okay. Just give us something a little more um, dressed up. Dressed up. It, okay. it, is a major, it is a major focal yeah, point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there are some, you know there are some existing areas that he has some retaining walls out there uh, currently. Um, we have recommended that, the, that those be added to and dressed up and the retaining walls reset so that they're cleaned up um, significantly. Um, technically, as a part of a, a special use permit, a detailed landscape plan isn't typically required, um, although we can certainly request as much detail as we, as we can from him in order that everybody feels comfortable with what the solution will be. Do, do the trucks that are there have to only be pertaining to that business? Yes. So they cannot bring any other um, trailers, trucks, uh, any other vehicles unless it is that business's vehicle. So they can't store anybody else's there. Nope. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good point. Anything else, my friends? Okay. You want to uh, move on to the next? Yep. So this one is the... Uh, companion project to uh, the one that we just talked about. Sonny went into great detail on all the different, different parcels, so I will not bore you with that information. Um, they are seeking a special use permit for a unique use, a rezoning to C3 Highway Commercial upon annexation, and preliminary and final development plan review for the proposed bag storage yard um, at the property at 14106 Archer Avenue. This is the intent to expand the operation to the south, consolidate in the future everything that's on the 143rd Street site that we just talked about, um, and utilize the ComEd easement, which is identified as pin 002 on your screen as their transfer uh, spot between the two yards. Um, that will not be, the ComEd site will not be um, utilized for any storage of any sort. It will just simply be a transfer location between them. This is the parcel that would be consolidated that Sonny had mentioned before. Um, there are the three parcels, the one that was previously annexed down in the lower portion of that screen. It uh, ends in 003, and then you can see the sliver of right-of-way directly above that, and then the larger parcel is the 009 parcel. Everything surrounded by yellow would be consolidated and put into place uh, with a rezoning all to C3. These are some views of the property from Archer Avenue. This is the furthest south portion. This is the one that was annexed previously. Basham uh, Drive is to your left on the screen. This then is the area of consolidation, like I said, as well as the special use permit for the outdoor bags for unique use. This also includes final uh, development plans as well. So what you see on your screen here is the uh, layout plan, basically, for the overall yard site. The detention basin is in the northern part of that graphic. Um, the storage area is kind of the shaded gray area. That will be filled with asphalt grindings, and there is an existing office building that um, is out there right now that has been there for quite a while that is not in this current plan. From a landscape plan standpoint, they meet all of our landscape plan requirements. Um, they have screening that goes all the way around the entire fringe of the property. The remainder of the property is all wooded, um, especially by the applicant's home in the upper left-hand portion of the screen. There are existing trees, as noted on that plan, that are on the west side. Um, there is a condition in the um, approval recommendation that if anything happens to those existing trees, the applicant will be required to install uh, screening that is uh, consistent with what is being installed everywhere else. Um, and then we have a suggested motion. Uh, the Planning Commission voted 6-0 to adopt the findings of fact that were in the staff report and recommended approval of a rezoning to C3 Highway Commercial and the special use permit uh, for the uh, outdoor storage for unique use. Uh, the following conditions were uh, put in place by the commission. The special use permit only allows storage of uh, mulch bags up to six feet tall. No parking can occur on the adjoining ComEd property until they can provide written approval from the property owner, i.e. ComEd, that the property is able to be used for parking. They have moved all of their cars off of that site uh, since the meeting. Uh, if approved as a part of any future application, the truck parking will require a drive aisle uh, constructed to, cities, uh, to the city's requirements. 
that starts at the origination location and ends in the uh, mulch yard, the new mulch yard. Um, the storage in it of any materials across the site can't be any taller than the fence that is provided on the south and western portions that is six feet tall. I, as I mentioned earlier, if any tree removals occur, they're required to play, put in place screening items that are consistent with what is already or what is being approved. Uh, no outdoor lighting is being approved as this as a part of this project, and so um, if they would do any outdoor lighting in the future, they would need to come back to the city to um, have that approved. We think this is actually a positive thing for the neighbors, um, so that they don't end up with. Um, what could be very tall uh, pole lights out in the yard that could, very similar to what the gentleman across from the 143rd Street site is dealing with, that could shine in there. So we want to make sure that we have control over that when and if it does happen. Um, the unique use special use will only apply to this current, current owner and operator. It will not want, run with the land. The item uh, number eight was uh, removed because he agreed um, to uh, deliver that information to us at a later date um, to prove that he does have access um, to go ahead and transfer that those goods between the properties and the unique use shall cease upon sale or transfer of the property corollary of that is a motion to approve the preliminary and final plans um, with our typical conditions uh, that the crossing of the unincorporated combat property uh, will be will need to be addressed and any outstanding engineering comments will need to be addressed there were only a few uh, small items that were still outstanding and that new signage if it was ever proposed in the future will need to adhere to the city sign code and that a separate sign permit would be required I, I do have to comment one additional um, thing about the this item that if there's any future development for outdoor storage of trucks, parking with trucks, that the developer or the new owner would have to comply with the current code, current city code that would require paving. Yeah. So um, there was discussion with the applicant that that's a possibility in the future. If that happens, they need to pave that area. Yeah, we, we talked, uh, we'll say at length, about the transfer of their trucks from the 143rd Street site to this new site. If they would transfer those trucks to this particular parcel, it would need to be subject to a separate development plan that would need to meet all the city's requirements for asphalt and paving and curbs and drainage and all that kind of stuff. Or they could be allowed to relocate, relocate them to portions of the existing yard where they already have um, some approvals to be able to do that and areas to be able to store them. So I wanted to be very clear that this was not a site for just random truck parking uh, throughout the area. All right, questions, concerns? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll put this on the action item two after the public hearing. Okay. All right, why don't we, uh, why, why don't we still, why don't we jump to our guests here from, uh, an auto repair property. Okay. So we'll do CED3. All right. So this one, CED3, is a special use permit for auto repair at the property located at 1600 South State Street. Um, this is PZC case number 202021. Um, this is the property that's located on the southeast corner of Division and State Street. Uh, the applicant, Robert Oldworth, on behalf of Gearheads Auto, um, who is the future tenant who is here tonight um, to answer any questions if you have any is seeking approval of special use permit to allow for an auto repair shop for the property located at 1600 South State. Um, this is a property that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. It has been an auto repair shop for many moons, um, we'll say, and uh, the use had ceased for over a year. And so as a part of our code, we do require that they need to reestablish the special use permit um, once any use ceases for over a year. Um, the owner of the property brought uh, Mr. Aldworth in to uh, talk with us and review his plan. Uh, for using the property as, a, as an auto repair store. The facility is obviously, as you might imagine, set up for an auto repair shop. It has all the uh, traps and the filters and the, and the drains and the floors uh, throughout the site to basically run it as an auto repair store. Um, 
we have worked with the applicant quite a lot um, over the past couple of weeks to try and um, come to agreements on improvements that need to occur on the site in order to bring it up to our current code standards. These are pictures of the existing conditions um, that you find uh, currently on the site. And what we have con concluded, and this is an image of some of the conditions that are in your staff report, but in essence, um, they will construct a right out only onto division. This will be a new concrete apron that will meet the uh, city standards. There will be an access point on 16th Street that is consistent with the existing access point, but it will be reconstructed, reconstructed to meet the city standards. Uh, they are going to uh, take out a significant portion of the asphalt that you see sloped down to State Street, and they are going to redo that in a landscaped area to help screen the um, parking and drive access point. They are also going to grass in the other portion of the parkway that's on State Street as well, so it's really just going to be the sidewalk. So this should clean up that corner pretty significantly. Um, they're going to add landscaping up on top of the wall along Division Street. That'll have, um, I believe there are arborvitae along that frontage to help screen that, as well as a new fence to prevent falling over in that into that area, as well as two new trees. There is a foundation landscaping area um, adjacent to the existing parking on 16th Street that will be landscaped as well as adjacent to the main entrance. They're going to resurface all of the asphalt on the site. Um, our engineering team is going to work with them to define the limits of it based on some testing and excavation once they get into it. And they're going to combine all of the uh, downspout drains to a new storm sewer connection to limit what you see in this picture on your left where all of the downspouts basically drain out onto the asphalt currently, which in winter, as you might imagine, creates some pretty significant uh, fall hazard issues. So all of those are included in it. It will be employee parking only on the south side. And I'll run through those conditions that the Plan Commission assigned to it. Um, we'll need a new business permit from the building department. All repair activities are going to take place inside the building um, and enclosed. And there will not be any inoperable vehicles stored outside of the building. Um, expansion will not occur, uh, which could result in a revocation of the permit. Um, the parking lot premises are going to be operated in an orderly manner um, within the parameters of this approval. Uh, the off-site spaces on 16th Street are for employee only, and they will have signage accordingly. Um, any new outdoor lighting beyond what is existing there currently would need to be re reviewed and approved by uh, city staff. And the site plan illustrating the parking lot, the details as I've just gone through, um, has been submitted. We actually received an updated plan uh, today that shows many of the things that we have identified on this plan as well. So we are in good shape there. All improvements are going to be done by July 31st of this year and any new signage will need to adhere to the city sign code that will be sub submitted as a separate permit. This is ordinance number 21002 and the request is to put it on the next meeting. Thoughts, questions, concerns? I have a question. I'm, I'm all for your... Go ahead. Go, yeah. I'm all for it for this. You know, I'm, I'm going to be 61 next month and um, I've driven past, I've been going past that uh, building that's been an auto repair shop for 61 years. Um, it's probably been there another 30, 40 years prior to that. Uh, my question is, is for um, plants, who's actually receiving the special use permit? Is it the property owner? Yes. Or is it to which the next? So it is the property owner. Okay. So then the next question is, is the, has the property owner at all their financial obligations for all properties that he owns within the city of Lockport. Yes, they have. They have submitted receipts um, for those payments. Specifically, the one at 1700 State Street. To my knowledge, I have. I have for sure received receipts for. I know this. this I know this one's okay. I want to know about the other one, and if the other one has not been <clears throat> taken care of, would this then prohibit? A special use permit. Are you talking about his obligations? If, if there's would, any debt or obligation or taxes owed to the city, it will impact this. So I can, I can look that up right now. Yeah. Um, as for the question regarding the the 
application or how the special use applies, the city council could limit the special use right. for this particular user. Um, it's been done at, for the Tamala Hotel, that as long as this <coughs> user operates the property, the special use applies, it doesn't run with the land, and if this owner or this operator or tenant, even the tenant, you know, if, if the tenant ceases the operation, that special use can terminate and it can be conditioned that it terminates without any further action by the city council. So that's an option if the city council wants to put that in there. See, I don't have any problem with, I just want to make sure that the owner of the property is clear on all the other properties. Because my preference would be to have it run with the tenants and not the property owner just simply because of some history. Mm -hmm. So I would prefer to have it run with the tenant. We'll draft the special use ordinance specifically for this tenant, for this for the operation that it seizes upon the current tenant operating the property. Okay. Any other questions? Does that does that help resolve your issue, Darren? If it runs only with I the tenant, looked, I haven't looked at the yeah. answer to my. We question. will also um, before since this is an action item. We have two weeks to look into this matter. We will determine whether there's any debt, taxes, or any penalties, fees that's owed to the city, and we will bring that up, and we will make sure that the owner uh, resolve yep. those issues prior to the final approval. Uh, I think Darren just wants to show off his software. <laughs> I'll get there right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, is there any other questions, concerns? All right. Well, we'll definitely have an offer action item, so we'll be able to find out there and research. Well, I'll, 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 I'll know. No, I just I didn't know if you guys had any questions or anything, so I figured it'd be better to come up here than sit back there. That's <laughs> all good. For the the record, could we get your name? I'm, my name is Robert Aldworth. Uh, this is I'm my James Aldworth. And you guys would be operating the business. Yes. Okay. Is this your first uh, business doing this? No. Um, I own a uh, another shop called Garrett's Auto in Mokina. All right, fellas. We'll uh, hopefully this works out, and well, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll put it on for an action. All right, let's get back to AT3. Oh, yes. <coughs> now back to AT3. So, um, M Mayor, members of the City Council, just like your semi-annual teeth cleaning that I did <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> the Open Meetings Act requires a semi-annual review of closed session uh, meeting minutes. Um, it could be done anytime throughout the year. The attached is what is considered to be Schedule A, which is meeting minutes that should not be released because there's confidentiality still exists or some of the minutes, meeting minutes have sensitive items that should not be released. Uh, what is uh, attached as Schedule B is an executive session meeting minutes that can be released because there's no need to keep them closed. And as required, the City Council is supposed to review them. They're, they're available in my office if anyone wants to come and peruse through any of the meeting minutes. I am going to make a slight uh, request for any... Um, uh, for the resolution to include that any closed session meeting minutes not already approved be approved. So normally I would put that in there, I inadvertently forgot it, but it's um, it will be the res resolution 21-029 would be uh, approving Schedule B that is attached that should be released and Schedule A that is attached that should not be released and that any closed session meeting minutes not already approved would be deemed approved. So if there's any questions, I would be more than happy to uh, entertain them. All good. All right, so we're looking for an action item for approval next? If you want an action item or if you want, if you are comfortable that I can just revise the resolution to include that any closed session meeting minutes that have not already been approved be deemed approved. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. consent. Mm -hmm. All right, Mucho All right, what's next? We've got uh, Public Works. What do you got, Brent? 
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, a couple items on the agenda this evening. PW-1 um, is in regards to Well 15. Uh, well 15, as uh, uh, just to give a brief update, Well 15 is getting very close to uh, being complete. Last step that we need uh, to do is to ensure that our water uh, quality and our water, um, basically the water makeup, the chemistry of the water will not impact our existing pipes throughout the city. Um, this is again, I know we, we bring this up a lot, but this is a Flint, Michigan um, and University Park, uh, uh, I guess, um, issue. Um, it, it is something that is, is very new and we are working through it. We are trying to um, figure out the easiest way to get through the EPA. So um, they first came back with a year's worth of testing. We went back to them with um, another uh, solution. This is the solution that they have agreed to. Uh, one of the caveats that we have is Cornwell Engineering Group. Um, be used, they are an EPA favorite. Um, they have worked with the EPA on several of these um, similar projects. They are out of Virginia, so it's a little bit of a, a new, um, new group for us, obviously. Also trying to um, you know, work with them and get them to, um, you know, to, to uh, hear what we need. We find out what they need, and, and we're getting to that uh, point where we're ready to finally get, get out there and do our testing. Um, so essentially what this is, is this allows us to take from our existing piping in the ground, take it out to well 15, well 15 will pump through this pipe, these are pipes that, are, that had been uh, placed throughout the city, we will then be able to test over the next couple months to ensure that that water that is coming out of well 15 does not negatively impact any of the pipes that we have taken and placed up at well 15. Um, essentially what that is doing is that is proving that any pipes that are in our system today will not be impacted negatively. So um, we feel extremely confident in this. We, this is the exact same water that many communities around us are using uh, from Joliet to Romeoville to Lamont. Um, so it's not a new water source by any stretch. Again, this is the result of a couple bad um, things that have happened. Uh, to some other communities that were not related to this type of a new well, they were completely different. Um, however, we kind of get lumped into it. And um, end of the day, we're providing a safe product to our residents. This is ensuring that safe product. It's kind of a, a double check, triple check. Um, but this <clears throat> evening, I have to come to council and ask for uh, some additional funds. So, um, $112,000 is what we're looking for. Um, a portion, 55000 will be to Strand to administer the testing on site, and then 57000 um, will be to Cornwall Engineering. That will be something that we have to send some samples out to Virginia. Um, they do some sample uh, sampling out there, some testing, and then they assist with the testing here. So this evening, um, again, this is the final step in the Well 15 turn-on. Evening, I'd be looking for $112,000. Um, this is resolution 21-024 uh, for Strand for $55,000, and then resolution 21-030 for Cornwell Engineering for $57,000. Be looking for consent. Any questions this evening? I have one, one question. Once the review is done, when will it be completely online? Uh, we are hoping that this summer, this well will be completely online blended and out to um, out to our residents again i want to stress we have no um, concern about this water the epa even in their letter their response they indicated that this water is good water they indicated that they understand that the quality is actually a little bit better than um, even some of our existing wells so it's yeah so we're we're we know that and we are doing everything we possibly can to expedite. Yep. All right, everybody good with consent on those? Uh, if we can just go back to my comments on that other property. The comment when you said you were 61. I'm 60. I'm not 61 <laughs> yet. Um, they are They are clear. They're good. <coughs> yeah, Darren's approved. That's yeah, it's off. <laughs> it's like a wizard. All right.
B BW2. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would have came up a lot faster when you were 60. <laughs> no, it was it was computer <laughs> error. <laughs> All right, what do you got for PW2? PW-2 is uh, our typical reduction, release of letter of credit. Um, this is for phase two in Oak Creek. Oak Creek is uh, essentially, they have built out their um, phase two portion of the development. I think there's a few lots that remain or in the um, building stage on a few homes. Um, they have put down their final lift on asphalt. All of the utilities have been inspected, all of the landscaping. Um, so this evening we would be asking for council's concurrence um, to release this letter of credit. And as always, this is uh, contingent upon a 10% uh, maintenance bond. This is a one year maintenance bond. So if there were to be any issues over the next year, we would be able to utilize those funds. Um, this is resolution number 21-023 and looking for consent. Any questions? Uh, yes, um, in almost all situations that year is, it really means four or five, six years. Um, by the time that like Oak Creek phase two, that that has been out there for a number of years. So we've gotten to see and experience um, the, the roadway, um, the binder course, which really that's where you're going to see your failures. So the asphalt, the, the surface course that gets put on, um, that's that's your riding surface. Your binder is where you're going to see the issue. So we've seen binder out there for a number of years. It would have developed into an issue by now. Um, the concrete sidewalk, same deal. You know, it, it's. Uh, you get a lot more years than that. Um, this one-year maintenance is really, it's a, um, just just that extra guarantee that, you know, ensures that when we, we do release this, we have one more year. Yep. All right, so we'll have that on consent. Uh, new valve trailer. PW-3, purchase of a new valve trailer. Um, valve trailers, this is uh, used for all of our um, water valves throughout the city. We have about 2,500 valves and so we do a an annual um, valve exercising program um, our current valve um, exerciser is it's re reached its uh, useful life um, it is it's trailer mounted however the new trailer mounted that we're looking at it's got an arm it's got about a 16 foot extension on it so right now in order to get to a valve you've got to got to back this thing very close um, to it this 16 inch arm um, extension will allow us to get two valves that are um, inside yards, hard to reach areas. Um, we won't have to drive over, um, you know, into backyards as much or side yards. So it's a uh, it's a nice piece of equipment. Um, it is again, it's replacing an existing, so it's not a, a new um, item uh, per se. It's it's replacement of an old, but will allow us to continue our valve exercising in house. Uh, we're looking for the expenditure of $80,146.58 to purchase this, and it is resolution number 21-026, and we would be looking for $80,146.58 to be expended on a new valve trailer. Consent request. All right, questions, concerns? All right, sounds like uh, consent is okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, next item, PW-4. Uh, this is for our design of 3rd and Hamilton. Um, as Council is aware, we've done uh, quite a bit of work in, um, I would say, the, the central uh, Lockport area uh, from the north end, which is essentially Thornton to 18th Street and from State over to Madison. Um, these two blocks in particular, 3rd and Hamilton, um, they were just outside of last year's project. Um, they were not um, a key element, and so I think when we initially were pulling the projects together, these two um, these two uh, blocks just um, were just outside of that. So essentially, what we have is we have two blocks remaining, and we're asking for council's consideration to design those this year. Construction would hopefully be next year. Um, Additionally, and I know that there's a little bit of detail in Chamlin's contract, but we also have an old uh, we have an old booster station 
and it's at Hamilton Street and Table Street. That old booster station, if you drive down to this area, you'll see um, it almost looks like a, a submarine um, hatch kind of deal looking out, uh, poking out of the ground. Um, it hasn't been utilized, it hasn't been used, it hasn't been opened in a number of years. So what we're looking to do is eliminate, there's a, there's a lot of crisscrosses there, some valves, um, a lot of additional equipment in the ground that we no longer need. So um, we also have worked with Chamlin to put together a preliminary design. Um, in the past, this would finish up that design and allow us to do both projects simultaneously. So to get a better job, bigger project, um, we thought about doing just this booster station a couple years ago but again it would have been a very small job we would have been paying um, a premium to get it done so i feel like this is a great job to um to attach it to so we'd be looking for again council's consideration this evening to award chamlin associates uh, dollar figure is seventy one thousand five hundred dollars and this is resolution number 21-025 and looking for a consent Questions, concerns? All right. Sounds good. We'll put on consent. Thank you, Mayor. And the final item this evening, uh, PW-5. This is a little bit of housekeeping. So every two years, um, IDOT asks us to uh, prepare and approve a resolution for construction in, uh, in the state right-of-way. Um, anytime that we have a main break, um, if we didn't have this resolution, we would have to try to reach out to them, make contact, let them know that we have an emergency, try to get emergency permits. Um, this allows us to essentially bypass that for two years. So we would be looking this evening for the approval of resolution 21-031 to allow us to, um, again, bypass some of this paperwork and bypass some of the time um, for each of these individual issues and uh, looking for consent on that item as well. Oh, good. Any questions? All right. Consent it is. Thank you. All right. Have we got any new business? All right. If there's no new busyness, we'll uh, look for a motion to adjourn. Second. Renee and Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, that's what I like. None of that uh, roll call stuff. Okay. Give uh, Kathy a minute to get set up. The city project. The Boy Scouts let us put it on their property. Renee, we need. Oh my gosh. Are you ready? Roll call? Yeah, please. Roll call. All right. Roll call. Sabin. Schreiber. Here. Bergbauer. Here. Gologli. Here. Deskin. Here. Loves. Here. Bartleson. Here. Beretta. 
Here, we have a quorum. All right, we're looking for a motion to have a consent agenda this evening. So moved. I got uh, Christina and Renee, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, tonight we have the uh, CL1 Committee of the Whole meeting minutes from January 20th, the regular City Council meeting minutes from January 20th, our payroll period ending January 24th. There is CA1, a license agreement with the Highland Ridge Apartments for the maintenance uh, of those two parcels. Uh, there is AT1, which is an amendment to Chapter 111, uh, having a Deputy Liquor Commissioner. There is an amendment to the development agreement for the Clover Ridge Townhomes, uh, Resolution 21001. There's a request to purchase the Ford, uh, Ford the four Ford police interceptor uh, utility vehicles. There's the MFT resolution for maintenance of streets and highways, resolution 21003. There's the release of the bond for the GG Temple. We've got uh, a release of the letter of credit for the Heritage Crossing Building 5, release of the letter of credit for Prologis Phase 1, including Buildings 1 and 2, release of the bond for Prologis Building 3, there's a authorized a task order for Christopher Burke for the design and construction engineering surfaces of the 2021 resurfacing program. Uh, there's the purchase of the VersaLift bucket truck and a purchase of a Ford F450 service truck. So looking for a motion to approve. And Mayor, be you, if I could, before the motion is being made, just for clarification for the record, uh, what's before you is a corrected Meeting minutes from January 20th is highlighted, corrected, 2-3-2001, today's date. So that will be what is considered to be on the consent agenda. Also, the other item is the Highland, uh, Highland License Agreement. There's a slight change that when we presented the license agreement, the developer wanted to put a fence on the southern portion of 143rd Street. It doesn't really change the substance part of the agreement is just a minor technicality just like the amendment to the uh, city council meeting minutes so just for the record those yeah, are thanks for reminding me I, I was supposed to mention, it. You were supposed to mention um, that. we it's in consent we can pull out as action if you want but they've asked to put a fence along 143rd for safety purposes we thought we saw no reason to deny that it's a good idea um, but we could leave it in consent if, if you're aware of it. Is everybody comfortable with keeping it as a consent yeah. okay Thank you. Okay, now looking for uh, a motion to approve consent agenda. Uh, Larry, seconded by, who is it? David. Christina, Renee. Oh, Renee, there you go. Um, have a roll call, please. You got it. Sabin. Yes. Schreiber. Yes. Bergbauer. Yes. Gologli. Yes. Duskin. Yes. Lowe. Yes. Bartleson. Yes. Peretta. Yes. Motion passes. All right, next we have uh, looking for a motion to approve our bills from January 26th. Larry, I'm seconded by uh, Joanne. Any questions, concerns? May I have a roll call, please? I'm sorry, your clerk was talking. Who motioned and seconded? I made a motion. Oh, yeah, sorry. It was, uh, yeah, Larry and Joanne. Larry and Joanne. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, roll call. Uh, Sabin. Yes. Schreiber. Yes. Bergbauer. Yes. Logley. I abstain because the city of Lockport is paying my employer. Okay. Deskin. Yes. Loebs. Yes. Bartleson. Yes. And Peretta. Yes. Motion passes. All if right, next is uh, CA1. It's uh, looking for a motion to approve the revised renewal. Mayor, before we get to that item, just for parliamentary procedure, the clerk needs a movement and a second for the motion to adjourn the committee of the whole meeting, just for the purpose of meeting minutes. Did we not do that? We did. If, if, I could, if we could get the name. Oh, man, nobody remembers that. Who did that? Christina Renee? There you go. And the motion would have been passed by both. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Dawn. Thank you. Sorry, we probably went too fast. Apologize, Kathy. All right, so now we're looking for a motion to approve a uh, memorandum of understanding with uh, IDNR and City of Lockport for the State Museum. And a motion for that. Second. All right, Renee and JR. 
questions, concerns, thoughts? Yeah, we do have one up update, Mayor, members of the council. Um, nothing within the agreement has changed other than one thing. The state did request that uh, originally they had asked us for a three-year agreement. They did contact us and ask us if it was okay to extend it to a five-year agreement. I didn't see any problem, but I wanted to bring that to your attention, that the memo has been revised to be a five-year agreement when it's $6,000 a year. Yeah, it would end in December 31, 2025. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Is there any, what happens if like uh, the building gets sold or something else happens? Is that, you would terminate problematic? It, it would terminate. There's, um, obviously this is a mutual agreement by all three parties. If any of the parties sent a notice regarding that we will no longer be obligated to, uh, to comply with the terms of the agreement because it's sold or a third party was dissolved or for other okay. reason, you know. I understand. Okay. Um, everybody okay with that? I think they've been a great asset to the city, so. All right, then we'll look for a roll call, please. You got it. Saban? Yes. Yeah. Schreiber? Yes. Bergbauer? Yes. Lovely? Yes. Deskin? Yes. Loves? Yes. Bartleson? Yes. And Peretta? Yes. Motion passes. All right, looking for a motion to approve uh, the amendment to Chapter 70 of the City Code prohibiting trucks from driving over the curb sidewalk. Um, Looking for a motion to approve Ordinance 21001. I'll make that motion. Second. JR and Joanne, questions, concerns? You never get an answer about the bollards. Yeah, I know we were working on that. We were talking to St. Charles about theirs. Um, we have to put together a, a full submittal tied out, so it's not going to be a quick yes or no. It'll be a, take some process. But at least we have some precedence, which yeah. is nice. So... I mean, I hope we get, I, I anticipate we're going to get them. It's not, it's just going to be a, we'll submit, they'll give us a few comments, we'll submit, and back and forth a couple times, but a couple two we'll stay on it. Yep. All right. Any other questions? When, did, when, did, when does signage go up? Or wasn't signage part of this? Yes, yes. I believe it is. It's going to be up we, we will be um, putting up signs in the appropriate locations. St. Charles, yeah. Okay. So it will go into effect when, then, after the signs? I would say after the signage. Okay, thank you. All right, my friends, can I have a roll call, please? You got it. Sabin? Yes. Er, uh, Schreiber? Yes. Bergbauer? Yes. Delogli? Yes. Deskin? Yes. Lobes? Yes. Bertelson? Yes. And Peretta? Yes. Motion passes. All right, last we're looking for a resolution to approve, uh, a motion to approve resolution 21011. It's the uh, engineering services for the Kelvin Grove Rear Yard Water Main Replacement Project. So moved. Second. Darren at JR. Questions, concerns on this? Were we looking for an answer for Darren on this? That's why we put it on an action yeah. item. What did you, uh, had to do with like if this was something that was done before? I remember. Not done. Yeah, I was able to make uh, Darren extremely happy and tell him that no, it had not been done. So, uh, so we ended up having to add. Uh, we're, we're adding the design of the additional uh, five blocks to the south. It's Maitland, uh, Runyon, and Putnam. Um, five additional blocks that uh, were not done. One block on Runyon had been water main had been installed. However, again, same deal. No, no front yard uh, services have been not put in. So. Um, yeah, make you I know make you happy tonight, Darren. But um, well, it's it's it's, it's, it's literally is one of those things that I know we approved it yeah. six years ago and seven years ago, and I was just shocked that um, it was never done. There's this neighborhood and one other left, and right. this will take us probably two construction <laughs> seasons to um, get completed. And I mean it's probably a million dollars a construction season so I mean yeah. after we design it we got to build it it's the right thing to do I mean we did the same thing at Beamy a couple of years back you know we've got to have these mains out front okay. just as long as we didn't pay for it correct yeah I am yeah. assuming we did <laughs> I, I guess I can verify I, I'm certain that we did not pay for this and uh, not receive the work so um, this evening we'd be looking again this would be a total design we would break it up into two projects two construction seasons so the north end would be 2022 south end would be 2023 all right any other questions then okay i'm gonna do a roll call please Sabin. yes 
Schreiber. Yes. Birdbauer. Yes. Galogli. Yes. Fiskin. Yes. Bobes. Yes. Bartleson. Yes. And Peretta. Yes. Motion passes. All right, my friends, any uh, last words here? All good? All right, then we'll look for a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, we got Larry and uh, I think I heard Mark or whoever was uh, good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.